G'day. Thanks for joining us. Today you're in for a real treat. I'm really excited to show you an actual live demo of something we did in Prague OpenStack Days last week. So what I'm about to show you as I walk through this demo is me laying down a production ready OpenStack cluster on Kubernetes, booting some instances, scaling up the control plane, performing an upgrade while maintaining connectivity between VMs. So I'm really excited to show you this and all this is going to take uh, hopefully under five minutes at least for the the demo portion but I'll explain it and keep it simple as we step through each and every piece. So I have a vanilla Kubernetes cluster at the moment. If I take a look at what's there I've actually laid down just in the sake of time uh, an open contrail SDN as that's our preferred installation of choice when it comes to SDN so that's all running in Kubernetes right now. Now using OpenStack Salt we've actually generated Kubernetes manifests and containers so we've taken this one OpenStack project and we've been able to extend it into the container realm so using OpenStack Salt we're not only creating the containers we're also creating the Kubernetes manifest. So what I'm going to do first is lay down kubectl create the support the supporting services. So those things at memcache, MySQL, and Rabbit at MQ server. So I'm going to lay them down. Let's take a look at what we've got now. Get pods. Now all these things are actually laid down as deployments at the moment. I'm taking a look at the pod level. So deployments give us a lot more flexibility and that will come into play a little bit later when we do the upgrades. But all those pods are running right now as you can see and they've been running for about 20, 26 odd seconds. So now we're ready to actually lay down the OpenStack control plane on Kubernetes. By the way we've actually used OpenStack salt to create a Kubernetes formula. So the Kubernetes cluster that's running um, is created with salt as well. So kubectl create minus f and let's lay down the OpenStack services now. So that's your usual suspects. Cinder Glance, Keystone, Neutron and Nova Controller. So again kubectl get deployments. Take a look what we got here. So as these things are individually coming up, we can see that we have the desired, the current, the up-to-date and available and the age. So at the moment, Glance is still booting, Keystone is still booting. But once these things become available, I should be able to query them. So I've also created a Keystone RC file so that I can actually create some things. So that's just pointing at the services in Kubernetes that are actually handling this request. So let's just take a look at what that looks like. Um, so kubectl get services. So the Keystone server can be found at 216. So that's exactly what we've got in the auth URL there. So if I source the, the Keystone RC file, I should see that I have Keystone up and running. Okay, so Keystone's coming up and we have all the users there. Um, let's have a look at Glance, image list. Glance hasn't come up yet. Cinder list. Okay, so we've got Cinder. So everything's still coming up. kubectl get deployments. Okay, so we're still waiting on Glance and Nova at this stage. So Neutron net list. So we have Neutrons available. Let's give it a couple of minutes and we'll wait for those other two to come up. Looks like Glance is there. We're just waiting on Nova. So Glance image list. So while we're waiting here, how about I go ahead and create two, um, two VMs. So first thing I'm going to do is create some neutron networks and upload 
an image and then I'll go ahead and run an overboot. So I'm just going to jump between, in the interest of time, some pre-baked commands that I actually have ready to go. So let's create a network. Created a subnet, attach some address space to it, a subnet, neutron net list. So we've created that. I have a Cirrus disk image, so I'm just going to upload that at a glance. Nothing exciting there. Glance image list. Okay, so this is the basis of what I can formulate a Nova boot off. Let me just grab this network ID and we'll just go and replace these two. And one final thing before I forget, let me spin up the uh, Nova Compute and Libvert for the two controllers that I have. So create dash F open stack compute because obviously we need those compute nodes up and running. Open stack compute. Okay, so I've created those two libvert compute instances which contain libvert um, and the Nova compute service. Get pods, and we should see that we are up and running. And if I take a look here, okay, I can see that. I have two compute nodes here, node 44 and node 45. If we take a look at exactly how the cluster is configured, it's a five node cluster, get nodes. And we have two that we've, three that we've slated for control plane and two that we've actually slated for computes at this point. Okay, so now I have Nova Compute up and running. I should be able to go ahead and run a boot and I'm gonna pin an instance to a node, so node 44 and node 45, which are my two computes, and so now I should have two instances if I do a Nova list. Right, so I have two instances here. I'm now going to hop over and quickly jump onto those instances. So I've just moved Windows over to my session over to one of the compute nodes. Just going to take a look and actually grab. So in order to get on the overlay, I'm just going to use um, the link local address on the compute nodes to get into the VM. So if I SSH to this and it's Cirrus and everybody knows about Cirrus, oh great. It's because I've done this before. Live demo away. Okay, so here we go. Cubs win. Everyone knows that. Okay, I have config eth0. So we can see that 10.0.10.3, if I hop back to the master, that is indeed the VM on node 44. I'll set up a ping here, 10.4. So I'm pinging the other VM. So open control is actually routing that traffic between the computes on the overlay. And let me do the same thing on the other guy. I will go and grab netstat minus nr. Okay, so I have this guy. And again, I've done this in preparation. Let me just clean that up. So I'm SSHing to the instance on node 45. I just sp spun up. Cubs win for those interested. And we're on IF config E0. And let me just go ahead and ping the other instance on the other computer. Now, it was interesting when we showed this in Prague, um, everybody was really excited. I wanted to take the time to actually dig into this demo, but somebody said, hey, you didn't actually show an upgrade with VMs running with traffic between them. So I accept your challenge, you know who you are, and this is this demo is for you. So I wanted to level up what we did and show a little bit more detail on what was done. Okay, so we have two VMs, overlays running, everything's up updated. Now, one more thing before we move on, kubectl get pods, 
let's just take a look at what version of Neutron we're running because the OpenStack services, I believe them to be Kilo. Let's lose kubectl exec. We'll get a session inside this container and we'll run Neutron server dash dash version. And for those people that know, 2015.1.2 is indeed the Kilo release. So I'm just verifying that we're at Kilo right now. Now if we go back and take a look at the deployments, kubectl get deployments, and as I mentioned earlier, you see what you have and what's available. So we have one of each, right? Obviously this isn't production ready, so let's go ahead and issue a scale command. Say we want three, which is a, we have three Kubernetes nodes to run this. Let's scale all the OpenStack control plane services up to three. So that's a simple um, scale. And what we want to do is open stack, point it at the directory that contains, and tell it that we want rep equals three. I need to just specify a dash f as it takes, reads it in. Okay, so we're now scaling Cinder, Glance, Keystone, Neutron and Nova controller. If we go back and take a look at what that's actually done, if we get deployments, now we're saying we want three, and for in the case of Cinder and Glance, we're already at three. In the case of Neutron, we're almost at three. These will all get attached to the load balancer. So we've just gone from single point of failure up to a fully redundant control plane, and they're all attached to the same load balancer. So that's a scale event done. So now what I'd like to show is the in-place upgrade. So we've created two VMs, we have the traffic running between them. We are going to update it now. As I mentioned earlier, we're using OpenStack Salt. So here's how I would go about an upgrade. I would go into the Salt repository and using infrastructure as code, infrastructure as code for the win, let's go and perform an upgrade. I want to go to Liberty. I also want to add that change where I give the OpenStack control plane three replicas. Okay, I save those changes. I'm going to go back to the Kubernetes master and I'm just going to regenerate the Kubernetes manifest. Okay, so I'm going to tell Salt to actually update the manifest. So let's execute that. It'll read in that change from the infrastructure's code and show me the changes. So for Neutron server, for example, we've gone from replicas one to three, and simply we're flipping out the image from Liberty, from Kilo to Liberty. Okay, so we simply just tell Kubernetes to apply that change. Apply OpenStack. So to this directory. Okay, so we've configured those deployments. Now, if we go and run kubectl get deployments. We should be able to watch this as things change. So we should be rolling out maintaining application availability. So service availability as we roll things out. So you should see them go down and come back up according to their scaling events. So we can see things scaling. They should normalize eventually. And then everything should be OK and up upgraded. So let's just have a look at the state. Okay, we're at three everywhere here. Now the controller needs to come back up. Okay, so the, the timer is running. We're at 11 minutes. Let's take a look at Keystone. For example, Keystone user. List. So Keystone is there. Cinder image. Actually, we can just run Cinder list. Cinder's there, glance image list. Glance is there and still serving neutron net list. Neutron still got that data from the upgrade and Nova list. Okay, so Nova's still coming up. Post upgrade. Okay. Okay, so Nova's there. So we have the upgrade complete at this point. Let's show me the money. Okay, cube 
kubectl get pods. Prove it. Let's pick on neutron again as we used that in the first example. kubectl exec minus it spawn a shell into that container and neutron server dash dash version. Now we're at liberty as you can see by the version number. Now final acid test here is did we actually drop any pings? So let's just finish that. 0% packet loss uh, 423 sent and 423 received and let's take a look at the other side 382 sent, 382 received. So there's evidence that there has been no packet loss during an upgrade from Kilo to Liberty. And if we take a look at the timestamps on these guys, kubectl get deployments. Again, this is a 13 minute video as I explained through, but really that was less than five minutes worth of work. So this is the new baseline. We wanted to show how we could extend OpenStack Salt to actually deliver a new experience, so enterprise ready experience. So we just demonstrated a, a seamless upgrade from Kilo to Liberty, um, non interrupting, and we also did a scale event. I think this is really cool. Um, I'd like to see what you all think, so let me know. But thanks for joining us and uh, keep on pushing the limits. Bye.